All right, I took a little bit of a break uh, to focus on some other things. Um, mainly, I have figured out how to make these things not only web friendly, where we can host them on the internet, but mobile web friendly, where they work on browsers on phones. Pretty cool. Anyway, that aside, let's get back to this particular exercise of CDP Neighbors. And I've gone ahead and finished off the other right routers, switches, and you're going to say, hang on, where's VS Code? Well, we don't need to be in VS Code. I have those four files for routers, switches, phones, wireless access points, and they're all working. And we are in the world of Blender. And this is the Blender text editor up here, text editor. And I have this file called CDP Neighbors Blender Pi. Right? And if I save this as it's in the same repo. Now this neighbors details does the work of making the files and then this blender file right I'm importing BPY because I'm going to probably need blender Python later and they're JSON files so I need JSON and I'm just loading these files into variables and then at the bottom here I'm printing those variables so let's watch this and we're going to click play and nothing's going to happen which is good it means it worked but we didn't see anything. So we're going to go to Window, Toggle System Console, and there's the output. Now let me save it to just put a delimiter in here because the console will actually say that I've saved it. Now let's run the Python. Maybe try to split screen these where we can see it run. Um, I don't know. There, something like this. I need to drag that over a little bit. So we're going to run it, and there are our three are four different arrays of arrays. Now the data is all the same except they're self-contained where routers is just the two routers, etc. So great, we have available JSON in our world. So let's not overwhelm anyone. We're going to need our first is our, right, if I, if, I, if I scroll over to my collections, it's empty in here, and we'll bring up the collections, and this is my animation tree animation nodes because I'm going to animate some things later and instantiate things. That is a third-party plugin so make sure you go download and install and add animation nodes to your world of Blender. It is free. So let's add in our switch and we're going to do file link and I'm going to link it to under images here I have this nice switch that I've made 3D. And let's make it big. Let's just scale everything up so we can see everything. Actually, I can't because I need a proxy. So I'm going to go Object, Relations, Make Proxy, and say OK. And now I have two of them. And I'm going to unlink the main one. And now I have this proxy that I can work with where now I have objects. And we're just going to call this Switch. And um, let's make it big, bigger, 25 let's say, and let's, right, that's good. Is it, it's below the z, the axis here, let's bring this up to a 1, well that's too high, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, that looks uh, still hovering a little bit, let's do 0 0.10, that's too low. Sorry about this, everyone. I like to get this right on the main. There we go. There's an easier way to do that, but that's nice and centered. And it kind of warped it when I made it, stretched it to 3D with the kind of plane, the bevels here, but that's okay. It still looks like a switch, and we get the idea. So we have our switch, and let's do the same thing, and we're going to hide some objects. So I'm not going to put everything on, but let's add our routers. Let's do this routers first. And there should be two routers, the upstream 6500s. And I don't have 6500s, I have little cartoon routers. Um, they don't look like the switch either. So I'm, I'm doing this for different reasons, just to show you that you have you know, free reign over what you want to represent these things. So this router object looks more like the textbook router. And again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to make an object, relation, proxy, and then we're going to unlink the main one, the first one, and let's give this a better name of routers. Alright, 
Now, we're not going to do anything. I know it's overlapping here. We're just going to hide routers because we're going to instantiate the routers based on the number of routers that we have. Okay, do you follow so far? So what we need to do is link this Python routers up here that we're printing here down here into our animation node. So we're going to do Shift A and right, it's hard to find scripts but they're under sub programs script. The other way you can do it is control A and just search for script. Okay, so we can search for it or we can shift A sub programs script we're going to place our script and let's make sure we differentiate this as right routers script and then we're going to pick our blender file up here and this is the important thing is a new output of a generic list because that's what it is and we want to call it I'm even going to copy it routers okay now we press the W key to bring up this little menu and we want to create invoke node. There we go. Very good. Now again, I said we, when we have the router data here, we want to instantiate this and make objects from the router. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, I think what we need is an object output, so shift A, object and we wanted an instancer, okay, and we're going to do deep copy, full copy, and how many instances do we want, and what do we want the instances of? Well, we want routers, and we're going to plug router instances into instances here, and look, it worked. We have two routers. We'll worry about the placement of these routers in a second, but we know that our data linkage is working correctly here. Now we want to transform their output location and what we're going to do is make a for loop to do that. We're also going to connect this router data in so we have access to the raw data but one thing at a time and we're actually going to go to node tree and change this to be yeah that's better. Make sure you do that, otherwise it's always executing the node tree, which can be CPU intensive. So, back to our for loop. We want to go back onto those sub-programs and look for a loop. We're going to plug the loop in here, and let's call this router loop. And we have an index here, and we have the iterations here. So. What we want to do is make a new iterator and this is going to be object, an object list and we're going to call this router icons. Let me zoom in here. Let me, right, so what we did there, let me kill this, is a new iterator and we want an object list, our routers, and let's call this router icons because there's going to be more to it. So now what we need to do is instantiate this W create invoke node and now what we can do is plug our objects into that routers icons list. We're also going to do another iterator while we're here just called router data no excuse me I'm sorry a new generic list just the data and we're going to call this router data and now instead of plugging that in we're going to connect our router data into the router data okay so far so good now we have these icons and the data as well as the index so maybe let's use the index to spread them apart on the x-axis that's not a bad idea. Now I think they're going to originate here, but that's fine. What we can do is, now that we have all of this data, let's do an object transform output. So Shift A, object, and we're going to transform the output. And what do we want to change? Well, let's start with the X, Y, Z. And what do we want to change are the router 
the router. See how they've already moved? Because we're adjusting the x, y, z, and they've moved down to the 0, 0, 0. Well, that's great. Well, how do we actually change their location? Well, we can plug the index here into the x location. Well, that doesn't work. We need a combined vector node. So let me delete that, and let's just add that manually just to see it. So what we need is a combine vector node. So under vector combine and we're, what we're going to do is plug that into our location and now we have the XYZ's that we can transform from the index. So now that has put them just a little bit apart on the X and if I do the same on the Y it will spread them apart that way and on the Z it will spread them apart that way. Now, I don't necessarily want that, but I do want to spread them apart on the x-axis. So what we need to do now is to just increase that index. So we're going to go Shift A with a number math node. right? So now we're going to plug that right in here. And now see it's multiplied by 0. Let's multiply it by 3. Well, see now they're spread apart. Let's make it 10 and give ourselves lots of room so we can present textual data to the left side of each of these routers or above and beneath them might be better. So maybe what we can do is them a little closer. Let's try <laughs> five just to spread them apart. Now where do we want them? Well we want them, these are northbound devices. Alright, so then So that's the multiply by 5, and, we're, and they're just going to keep spawning to the left. It'd be nice to have them center on either side of this x-axis. Um, what do I just do here? Divide by 2. No, see, that's not going to work. Uh, let's go back to that multiply by 5, and we'll figure that out later. Um, but for now, let's punt them up a bit on the z, right? These are northbound devices. So there we go. We sort of already have that there's two routers connected here. Now, I guess what we could do maybe is add another math node. Let's just try something here and put it in here and say subtract. So if I subtract 5, you see, so I might be able to do, see if I do 2.5, it puts them sort of right apart. Now I don't know what that's going to do as it scales. I wonder if I should instead subtract by, I guess I can't do that, eh? It's not going to let me do both. I, well, let's just leave it at 2.5 since there's two routers. That's really nice. Right, so let's go ahead. Let me take a break, right? And there might be some stuff for you to absorb. So let me start again. What we have is routers, and it prints out as a JavaScript object list. And there happens to be two, if we look at this in VS Code maybe, um, if we look at that routers, this is what's being loaded in. So we actually get two routers, one for each array. Pretty neat. Now, what we use is an object instancer to instantiate the routers based on the length of the router data. We've linked it in with a script, and this is important. Routers is linked to routers. And then we've used a for loop to plug our data. Now, we haven't touched the data yet. All right, and there's a lot of really good data that we're going to plot. So before we overlay the south and east-west devices, let me plug the data in as labels around these routers to give us the really nice information. OK, so we're going to do something very similar. To make sure that I get it right, 
I'm going to dry one or two as a dry run and then I'll invite you back to the development session to see how we're going to overlay information around these routers and make this an incredibly rich document. Stay tuned.